so guys let's uh, start a very warm welcome sir so today we have uh, with us dr a velumani uh, he, he was a scientist with the barc and he is a well known entrepreneur he, he was the founder chairman and uh, managing director of thyro care which he started in 1996 sir belongs to a place uh, nearby to coimbatore in tamil nadu and uh, he did his bsc from madras university and later when he joined uh, bark did uh, approx 14 15 years with the barc and he acquired msc degree and a doctorate degree in thyroid chemistry from university of mumbai so as we know thyroid care was a franchisee model which went into diagnostic laboratory and uh, offered affordable testing services so it it became the largest thyroid uh, testing laboratory with more than 1000 outlets across india nepal Bangladesh and the Middle East. So, as we know, Thyro Care was listed in the year 2016, and it was uh, subscribed uh, overwhelmingly 73 times. And uh, there is one more uh, Nuclear Healthcare Limited, a uh, radiology diagnostic, with its branch in Mumbai, and it's basically cancer-related uh, imaging services. which are available almost at half the cost of the other providers and as we know the, the uh, i mean thyro care was sold to pharmacy in the year 2021 so this uh, with this introduction we request uh, velu mani sir if we missed on something or uh, uh, the introduction from your part sir and then we'll move on to questions from the audiences thank you very much uh, thanks for uh, hosting the uh, special session in healthcare and uh, calling me to be a part of it i don't uh, own or i don't have, i'm not an authority in entire healthcare in entire healthcare uh, pharma is uh, equally important and non pharma is uh, uh, 50% in the non pharma what is known as hospital diagnosis 50% treatment is or even diagnosis only 20% treatment is 80% and in diagnosis radiology is 40 50% and the remaining only is pathology and even in pathology pathology has three verticals pathology microbiology and biochemistry i didn't do pathology i didn't do microbiology i took only biochemistry again on biochemistry there are two segments uh, one is uh, what you call as a chronic illness another is acute illness i was more focused on chronic illness uh, not on acute illness in other words uh, first time somebody could identify diseases different and disorders different diseases come and go disorders come and they don't go so a lot of things were a part of uh, the thyrocare success and uh, i keep telling people focus gives success and when i started thyrocare with the name thyroid everybody was uh, advising me a 15 gram gland is me kya jyada milega i think uh, i if at all something went right it was the brand name thyro care and i had a courage to put up only seven tests in my menu all seven thyroid tests only i did not do cbc i did not do blood sugar to start with very unique it was and then maybe i was there in right time and did right things with the right spirit a lot of room was there for to disrupt and probably i did it uh, when no one understood what is disruption i can keep on talking uh, i just wanted to add to what you gave us an introduction this is the background we'll be very happy to answer the questions questions uh, if it is in diagnostics well and good and if it is uh, hospital care well and good but i have no real knowledge about pharma segment so keep your questions uh, as much as possible towards uh, uh, health care 
go ahead uh, whoever wishes to either the co-hosts or speakers and if uh, they are uh, done with we can uh, take questions from listeners thank you very much thank you sir so sir uh, i would uh, ask about uh, the prosperity with that today's title for our space is the role of consid uh, consolidation and efficiency so uh, an overview i would request from your side and uh, again i would request you be uh, a bit louder because uh, the voice was breaking in between thank you sir just hold on let me come out of wi right am i now little more clear yeah better sir yes sir right. so why i said the role of consolidation and efficiencies see when i entered into the business the pathology business was only town specific city specific at the maximum 100 km from the city was some large player was doing no one thought it can be done at a national level i felt uh, uh, business uh, which is related to chronic illness unlike the acute illness where patient is waiting in the bed for getting the report and getting the treatment started uh, i felt that i can do a centralized laboratory so i first started only for south mumbai then i did for entire mumbai then i added for surat and uh, pune and nasik which were 3 4 hours uh, train journey then i thought it is only 2 hours by air delhi calcutta and um, chennai should be doable so this is known as consolidating for the entire country in a single laboratory which probably was not thought of by many people maybe i also didn't think that this will land up as such a wonderful project had i had enough money i would have put laboratory everywhere had i felt investor can be always asked to give money i might have probably gone to investors and put many laboratories so what happens when you do your consolidation your machines are having enough business to run 20 hours to 22 hours in a day you know i keep telling i have done a uber kind of a Uh, innovation which means before uber came into picture taxis were standing for 20 hours and running for 4 hours subsequently they run for 20 hours and stand for 4 hours so is a thyroid testing machine if you put in every location you will not have any much workload so if my balance sheet looked impressive that was because i consolidated and uh, from all over the country using air cargo logistics every night same night before midnight the sample used to come and we used to work only at night it was a very very different way of approaching unlike conventional players as i said consolidation gets volume to one floor that increases the efficiencies i used to tell a punchline uh, a standing machine is a liability and the running machine as an asset i think throughout healthcare in our country even worldwide there are lots of inefficiencies uh, the uh, operation theaters which can really function something like 100 hours in a week are hardly functioning for 10 hours a week if you take things like that even ct machines mr machines of course off late they are running for more than 10 12 hours but otherwise they even today there are many hospitals where they run only for 4 hours or 6 hours efficiencies are very very important and let me uh, conclude my uh, explanation about the title by telling that if you make profit from the customer that is not sustainable profit but if the profit comes because of the flow efficiency that is sustainable when you get profit from flow efficiency means your cost of creating a service is lowest in the market so this is the brief background and i will be very happy to answer if there are some specific questions towards it yeah thank you sir ravi uh, you must have good questions to ask from sir 
Yeah, sir. When you are talking about efficiencies, uh, like what you built on thyro uh, treatment, where are the other works, other companies, or India as a whole is working on in terms of bringing efficiencies? Uh, like you pointed out on the hospital uh, OT side, but where are there are large scale changes which are coming in operations and hospital business or diagnostic which can improve in terms of quality of service coming to consumer at a at a very low price. Something like anything which you have done earlier, anything which is happening by other companies right now. See, in that way, uh, many haven't uh, really taken note of Arvind Eye Hospital of Madurai, a tier two town. They focused very clearly on uh, uh, removing blindness uh, in rural India. But what made them very powerful is the efficiency. If in any hospital an eye surgery takes two hours, in their hospital the eye surgery used to take 20 minutes or even less. If any other hospital was taking a medical doctor's attention for one hour for a surgery, here it will take only 10 minutes for the surgery. To that extent, it was completely automated kind of thing. I said it because diagno not necessarily only diagnosis, even treatment. Not necessarily just treatment, even surgery. We are to even eye surgery, which is said to be more complicated. Why I say this is uh, hardly anyone has truly consolidated, optimized to get efficiency. You look at Narayana Hridayalaya, which is uh, once again focused on heart. I have a reason to believe this is also a consolidated, optimized, efficient model, which according to me is doing very well. The big problem happens is when you have uh, presence in all districts in the country, and if you want to give quick result, you need machine standing very close to the customer. That means you have very small market to cover and it won't run for more than two hours in a day. Having said that, uh, there are two kinds of doctors, there are two kinds of hospitals. One kind is a patient is waiting for the doctor. Another kind is doctor waiting for the patient. So this is inefficiency if the doctor is waiting for the patient. So to my opinion, uh, either a joint practice or a kind of uh, uh, business model tweaking so that no man is sitting, every man is working. No machine is standing, every machine is running. If somebody can ensure that, that business will have highest profitability. So picking on this, like you pointed out on Arvind and uh, Narayana, is it wise to say that a super speciality place which focuses on single kind of function, uh, Narayana or even HCG, which works on oncology, they will have uh, higher efficiencies and should eventually go to a higher margin kind of business. And also from our side, like most of the participants are from capital market. What's your understanding in terms of valuation, say globally, uh, do super speciality uh, trade at a higher valuation compared to, uh, in terms of multiple and so, do they command premium to uh, something like, which gives all kind of services? Right, I think, uh... There are too many questions. Let me uh, recall the questions. Number one is uh, the option of single speciality or multiple speciality. If I am asked, I will tell multi speciality is security and single speciality is long term prosperity, which means uh, multi speciality you will certainly have a viability and a fairly good marriage. But multi speciality scalabilities are not that simple. Leaving a couple of brands in the country, especially the ones who have been working now for more than even 20 years, the multi speciality scalabilities are challenged. Single speciality is much easier to scale. Only big problem with single speciality is first five, seven, ten years might go 
uh, without profitability. I used to tell in the village language, one business is coriander, another business is banana, third business is coconut. Coconut will give late results, but it will give results for uh, five, six decades. Not banana, not coriander. So, so single speciality doing needs a lot of courage, conviction, bold, risk taking. But I have a reason to believe when I analyze the scripts and their multiples in uh, developed markets, the single specialities are having much higher uh, multiples. I have a reason to believe even in India, a couple of emerging single specialities, especially in a pregnancy and surgery alone, they are doing well and I don't know when they get listed and post listing after five, six years only, you will know that truly what is the multiple. But in my opinion, single speciality is one which will give better returns to the investor. Yeah, Prince, go ahead. Sir, uh, uh, some listeners have also asked, I think uh, some voice issue, uh, can you check with your connection or maybe try to speak a bit louder, please? Sorry to interrupt again. For, uh, this is the issue with me? Yeah, sir, they are saying the volume is, I mean, uh, comparatively less. Now you spoke, uh, it was better. Okay. Okay, now I will start loudly, don't worry. And I am also changing my place. Ask questions. Uh, let me uh, again uh, go ahead. Uh, sir, I wanted to know one thing. As an investor, na, we always give this logic that uh, uh, diagnostic that diagnostic is about uh, uh, a very small portion of entire like finding out the disease and what the diagnosis would be very small portion, say single digit uh, of the entire health. While it decide what kind of treatment a patient would go. So with this uh, thought in mind, is it better to say that diagnostic will grow much faster than entire uh, hospital spend in India? Because this is where you are spending 5%, 10% of the entire bucket and this decide what the treatment, what the medicine should go. Uh, this decide the course for entire 90% then. So is that thought correct? Do you see that transition happening that uh, this uh, diagnostic will grow at much faster pace than the entire uh, healthcare yeah. spend from India? So the question is the patient's requirement when you look at the percentage of diagnostics, medicine, surgery, uh, all these things will be, ratio-wise will be varying. As far as uh, uh, what I see in India, it's around 10 to 15 percent is the diagnostics. 25% is medicine, remaining are all non-medicine, non-diagnostics. Will it change or not? It's very difficult for me to tell because the more you diagnose, the more you treat. So its volume may go up, but the percentage of revenue of what patient pays for diagnostics may not truly change. So this is my opinion as far as the... Uh, pie diagram of revenue in the healthcare is concerned. But that is not very important. What is very important is, is that adequate testing done for a patient in India? The, the answer is no. In a Western world, for a patient in a year, if 10 tests are done in India, for a patient, not even one test is done. That is because, again, uh, that's a matured, developed market. India will take maybe 10, 20 years to become a matured market. But the ratio might remain same, but the volume certainly will grow. This is my uh, inputs for your question. Sure, sir. I'll uh, let other Samarth, I guess, have something to ask. And then... Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, one, one question, sir. As an entrepreneur, you started your journey uh, uh, back in 1990s. So, uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, this was a or non-organized sector at that time. 
So what was the biggest challenge uh, uh, did you faced at that time, sir? Because logistics would be a problem. Uh, I must month. tell you, everything was a problem. Yeah, for any entrepreneur who gets inside, you ask him, everything is a problem. You are new into the market. First and foremost, I was a scientist and I never knew what is business. Second thing was, uh, I knew only thyroid. I did not know pathology. Third thing was uh, to do this kind of uh, sample transportation. Logistics is very, very important. And that time, I'm talking 1995, there was no courier system only. And then IT today is very vital in running business, especially in services industry. And uh, I don't think in 1995, anybody had a web server with them. And HR is something which is not at all understood by people even today, but that was again a challenge. Nobody will come and join in an unbranded uh, entrepreneur. Having said that, everything was the problem, but market was not a problem. Market was having a good pricing, which was sufficient enough for me to disrupt. And number two, this market, uh, there is a punchline, I will tell you, no one opens the syringe before the patient opens the purse, which means uh, you are getting paid up front and you don't have to truly wait for money to come in. And uh, uh, I think there were enough challenges, enough opportunities, enough comforts, all, all were there. But uh, uh, yes, Somebody has to get inside, learn things. Nikal Pado Rasta Apniya Banta hai. So I just got inside, made a lot of mistakes, uh, made, uh, made them very fast and ensured that I didn't repeat the mistakes. So this is common for every entrepreneur then or now. But I can't sit and, uh, you know, uh, my children are wondering, Dad, was that we started a business be before even internet came? is that we managed to do a business without a mobile. So all these things, in fact, the word entrepreneur was never heard by me till I finished 10 years. So ecosystem was different. Environment was different. There were adequate challenges, but they were different challenges those days, and today it's very different challenges. I hope I have answered you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Value educator, you have any questions from sir? Yeah, yeah. Although we discussed it yesterday, but uh, I still want your opinion. Like, how easy or difficult it is uh, to capture the market share from the unorganized? See, unorganized is slowly finding it difficult to survive. Not only in pathology business, even doctors who are standalone, not branded. Uh, diagnostic centers stand alone, not branded. Why that? Even ordinary Kirana Dukan, which is unbranded, anything unbranded is having challenge. So people are moving from unbranded to branded. So some consolidation is taking place. But the big challenge here in the industry is, and I don't know about other industry in pathology industry, if the market is growing 10 to 12% per annum, then counts of competitors are growing maybe 15 to 20 percent. Since this business has huge profit margins, everybody sees very easy to start. You, what you need is 300, 400 square feet and you can put one or two machines and you can start operating if you have four or five well wishers as doctors. So Indian healthcare system itself is fragmented. When I tell fragmented, 90% of the medical doctors are practicing standalone, only 10% are attached to big hospitals. So that itself gives room for laboratories to function standalone because standalone doctor wants standalone laboratory only. So consolidation will take place in terms of organize, unorganized to organize. But when I talk about and tell the word consolidation, it is to see how can you get more business to same floor. Instead of putting more floors, if you can get business from multiple cities to one city, 
the next day morning reporting is something which i did uh, uh, from the day one till i exited i used to have the laboratory in navi mumbai and i used to report only next day morning even for navi mumbai kashi ho ya washi next day only was the result available this was my conviction which made me to consolidate but if somebody is under pressure to give a thyroid report within 2 to 3 hours which is a disorder which is going to remain life long they will end up putting in mumbai itself 10 locations in every district headquarters one that means everywhere machines will be there volumes will not be there volumes are not there the profitabilities will be less because efficiencies will be low so that is what i want to call as consolidation and its uh, necessity and its challenges any any more questions sir uh, what is uh, i mean we have uh, pricing pressure in the industry so what is the best way to tackle this i mean uh, see pricing pressure is there in every industry you ask everyone uh, whether he is a photographer or whether he is uh, even a pan dukan wala or even vada pa wala everybody will tell competition aajkal i think my my uh, punch again is uh, there are two kinds of people one who always sees competition another one who always sees an opportunity jisko bhagwan dikhta hai usko patthar nahi dikhta hai jisko patthar dikhai deta hai usko bhagwan nahi dikhai dega so there is no true uh, competition in that sense in such a huge market everybody has uh, enough to have a business provided he is honest in terms of quality in terms of pricing in terms of presentation there is enough business i don't think that's any big challenge yes there are many people coming inside many coming inside itself says there is too much of business otherwise everybody will not come inside so uh, i look at it as today there is more business opportunity than the competition right sir shri shrini you have any questions uh yes uh, prince ji good evening everyone uh, good evening dr velumani big fan uh, your journey is a big inspiration thank you all of uh, all of us uh, uh thank you for sparing your precious time short question sir we are seeing uh, you know the consumer purse to borrow the language consumer purse in other categories automobile and some fmcg type the number of purses is, seems to be reducing sometimes the money in the purse is reducing when they are patients are you seeing any effect like this or it's not relevant because this is a different type of spend no with all said done and the pyramid is pyramid rich is there uh, but rich are less poor are there but poor are many so this pyramid is applicable in every industry and healthcare also is an industry where some people don't go for testing uh, too often or as often as it is needed for example a diabetic man must monitor a set of things every quarter i don't think uh, that is happening they think once in a year is more than enough in other words in india the preventive health care is uh, hardly anything in western world more than 50% is uh, preventive care in india it's hardly 5 to 10% that too because for the in the recent days a lot of competition and lot of packages are made i created an arogyam as a profile and today the same arogyam profile is nooks and corners of the country people are producing so tests have become cheaper because they have become cheaper some consumption has gone up but having said that Mm, people still feel a thousand rupees will get them a better buffet dinner rather than getting a wellness package so priority is not there for health care as of today of course covid has brought in some significant improvement people always feel the neighbor only will die because of heart attack they will not be but then the challenge is mm, per capita income is low let me dwell on it a little more 
what we know in india is a per capita income of anything from 3000 to 4000 dollar per annum whereas the developed countries have 30000 to 40000 dollar per annum 10 times more and they spend 17% of that their gdp uh, 15 or 10 to 15% 17% of gdp in india we hardly spend 2 to 3% of gdp so if you ask me with this 3000 dollar roti kapda makan is 1000 each so for health care there is no money available as much as equity market is expanding for the last two years i see the number of uh, um, demat account holders uh, are growing in the last two years similarly the health care the investing community and the health care uh, opportunity both will be um, next future and per capita income if it doesn't go up the consumption will not go up if money is not there testing will not be done testing if it is not done you will come to know very late about a problem and when you diagnose late and your treatment cost will be high unfortunately insurance is not covering even today the diagnostics aspect of it as it should and uh, biggest challenge is the government is not spending adequate so a lot of challenges are there but having said that in my personal opinion next 25 35 years is going to be the best period for healthcare stocks to uh, get the best growth and value thank you sir very detailed answer thank you very yes sir uh, we have one question from shashank uh, value educator he is asking like in uh, when you were uh, into business when things were not going right how did you tackle those times now i saw nahi that things were not going all right i must tell you 27 years it was a heaven never i had a problem a company which has never never borrowed a company in which nobody has put in money nobody has though i have gone to an ipo ipo was not to take money inside the company the private equity money never came inside the company such a wonderful business very fast growing 25 years uh, a cagr of 25% i don't think even somebody can dream like that with a 40% profitability every year i think i was blessed to have landed in thyroid i must tell you thyroid sounded like android for me and i did not ever have any distress things were going perfectly all right except the last one or two years so you must wonder what is that last one or two years the covid came in covid was uh, an opportunity for everyone and i had created a very fast a capacity of doing 40000 rt pcr per day and i had a very powerful network so i picked up sample from everywhere now velo money was destroying the business opportunity for the people stakeholders in the covid management so i was uh, blocked right and left banned right and left every other day there was a news item telling that this municipality has banned thyroid care this municipality has banned thyroid care without giving a reason a so cause notice we were, i was arrested i went to high court and worked a lot to reverse a lot of uh, such uh, harassment but having said that that was a very unfortunate situation the country was facing and the challenges were there otherwise the business had never had a situation where aage kya karega aisa ek situation tha hi nahi hai i must tell you here i left a brc job not because i wanted to do a better job brc job was the best job one can ever dream of i also haven't left to thyro care business to do some better business there can't be a better business than thyro care business so in my opinion this journey of thy not only thyro care it is and i don't think either metropolis or lol or any of the players i don't think any challenge is there some growth pangs will be there some employee retention will be there 
some centers may not do well but an overall if i ask me it was a heaven thank you sir can i ask you a question my name is devashish datta go ahead so this information is slightly dated uh, before covid times um, so i worked in telecom but with telecom we were working on healthcare across africa asia uh, south asia and southeast asia and uh, then i quit my job and uh, you know so i looked at healthcare in india and um, and these are stats and this therefore the concern and so if you meet the uh, hospital association of in india which is in delhi next to the who building as per them 50 bed hospitals uh, overall there are about 2000 so if you do the calculation based on that uh, you know basically you get a very small number now there are 2650 uh, std codes in india so you can assume there are those many districts in india so if i do a back of the envelope calculation as per me we have approximately about 20 lakh um, hospital beds for a population of 1.4 billion now the other calculation which i also did at that time is to if you set up a 500 bed hospital it will cost you at least a billion dollars most of the cost is land which of course they can then negotiate with the government of that city to get it cheap but it is expensive it's almost like setting up a hotel it's not a, it's a very asset heavy model is what i'm trying to say the third thing is when i looked at doctors and i consulted with what a lot of them to figure out you know the hi system the hospital information system sir uh, sir just system. to interrupt you uh, there was is sir. sir can you please yeah. uh, make yeah, a i was about to tell him ask me a question but then i didn't feel like yeah. it so so the thing is sir the challenge is it is so expensive and the doctor community is not aligned to getting efficiencies how do you address those challenges to make a breakthrough see i have been telling that consolidation volume generation and the optimization is very important for profitability now there are some company let me let us look at uh, even uh, a, a, a telecom industry which you say you were with mtnl never made profit airtel and jio are making lot of profit so it's nothing to do with industry it is to do with their efficiencies in the airline industry air india never made profit but indigo at least uh, in between made a lot of profit so if you ask me it is nothing problem of the industry it is the problem of the stakeholders who are the players who haven't got an efficient model to operate i think uh, uh, look at the hospitals uh, numbers they are not discouraging but having said that if somebody has put up an ordinary casual uh, uh, hospital not a good uh, uh, quality of service and not a fair pricing it is very difficult for them to make money cutting the long story short what do you do is not as important as how do you do whether it is diagnostics or whether it is pharma companies or whether it is uh, hospital service it is non health care everywhere only an efficiency can give returns to the investor uh, nothing else oh, hi yeah. can i can i ask you a question sir yeah uh, mr imran uh, one minute uh, mr imran one minute dr cardio yeah one second sir uh, doctor yeah. uh, sorry uh, davasi sir uh, have you got your answer or uh, you have any follow up question no so the way i understand it is what dr venumani is saying is uh, the challenges are big but how you go about doing it is and that's where actually i got stumped sir because i found the community of doctors to be extremely you know this guy drives an asx an audi asx he is a uh, uh, md uh, he is an hod of a prominent hospital i am just taking a caricature don't take it as a personal this thing uh, but what i'm trying to say is that he's happy he's making you know anything in excess of 15 to 20 lakhs a month so my point is if he's happy why would he want disruption and change will happen only through disruption and that therefore i found it very challenging okay let me let me give you a punch line success is never a problem sustaining the success is the biggest problem next question please yeah dr cardio 
Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Vikas Prohit. I'm a cardiologist. Uh, my question to sir is that uh, uh, right now WHO is considering health for all initiative, and uh, in future we will see that uh, cost of the treatment uh, will come down. And obviously, our government or governments are all over the India are also pitching in. There are multiple health schemes are there. So uh, what I'm seeing that uh, over the time the margin of uh, whether any operation pro operative procedure or uh, any investigation is their margins are coming down the packages are very less but the volumes of uh, them are increasing and we are also expecting the all diseases uh, as our population grow next and 10 to 20 years we are expecting more people will get uh, disease these are the uh, government and who estimates but uh, the uh, the packages which previously like for example what, I'm a what is the question sir so my question is that how how you say in uh, next year uh, health healthcare in next 10 20 years as uh, the procedure will uh, procedure volume will grow but margin will come down heavily on investigation as well as on treatment part see i told about arvind the hospital there is no one charging as less as arvind hospital is uh, charging and no one has more profit than Arvind Hospital. They do, I think, two patients out of five patients, they do free of cost also. What I'm trying to tell is, uh, as a cardiologist and as an MD doctor, as a medical doctor, 80% of the work done by the medical doctors is a paramedical work. You need to rework on it. I have a punchline आप काम करते हैं या या काम कराते हैं। So lot of work can be got done using trained MBBS, trained BSc, MSc. So in my personal opinion, currently you have enough margin, so you are not trying those procedures. You will be naturally forced to employ trained uh, staff who are paramedical to do all paramedical work and medical work only a medical doctor should do. Many are now reviewing and reworking on it when they understand that they have to do more cases. Medical community doesn't believe that somebody else can do that work as efficiently as they can do. But that is not true. You can make a man to do as good as you are doing. So in my personal opinion, the turnover will go down, but profit will, absolute profit will improve. Thank you, sir. Imran, you go next. Uh, thank you. I, I, I hope I'm audible, uh, uh, doctor. Yes. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, doctor. Uh, I'm an investor. I just uh, uh, wanted to understand from your side, if you can tell us, you know, the, these uh, standalone patient service centers, right, uh, in the diagnostic space, especially the in vitro diagnostics. Uh, so how, I mean, how stressful they are, you know, given the situation currently we, we are in, because the bigger players can only, you know, uh, have efficiencies and all those things. But for, for them, they have to give a 30-40% cut to the doctor and then 25-30% on the reagents rent you know employee salary and all those things so 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 how large this market was and, and what do you think you know this market is currently it's very difficult for me to give a business model and profit with the cut in the system and cut for the agents that's very very unfortunate having said that again i think the word is volume and efficiency if you have a walk-in center, that walk-in center can manage anything from two patients to 200 patients a day. So if you only get single-digit number of patients, you have to close the shop for If you have 25 walk-in then you have profit अगर समझो साउ पेशेंट आ ही गया है इससे ज्यादा प्रॉफिट किसी भी बिजनेस में नहीं है सो आई थिंक व्हाट वी नीड टू लुक एट इट इज इज द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द इन द प्रीमाइसेस फुल्ली यूटिलाइज्ड आई मस्ट वंस अगेन टेल यू इफ एवरी स्क्वायर फीट इज यूज्ड 
the profitability is highest be it a hospital diagnostic center or even a collection center so kharch to rahega sab ko to khilana padega lekin volume rahega sab kuch hone ke baad bhi aapko profit aayega volume pakadne ke liye rasta pakadiyega aisa hai ki as of today the communication between the customer and the laboratory is very very weak and poor though it has improved in the last couple of uh, uh, 10 20 years it will take little more time patient is scared to knock the doctor's door though he has problem because he does not know andar ek bar ghus gaya hazar kharch hoega ya la kharch hoega so this is the biggest problem and lack of confidence lack of trust all are the major problem there is no problem with the discipline and its profitability now the voice is all right yes yes yeah sir it's fine so in the meantime sir uh, let me ask one question the tie, government tie up in diago, uh, diagnostic industry how you see it i mean how profitable it can be uh, as a business because dealing with government is not a uh, i mean see one problem i think there is a in fact a miss uh, no mer what is known as public private partnership public private partnership is meant for high capac infrastructure like roads tolls tolls bridges all those things need public private partnership uh, where uh, too much of money is needed too much of administration is needed in a uh, pathology business i don't think anything really is a capex any 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 laboratory to put up it needs only 2 crores 3 crores i don't think government is needed having said that what is happening in the industry is contracts this is not public private partnership each each state government uh, asks any private player i at this rate i want you to give service and there are many people who agree to do at that rate and government chooses who has better strength and gives that business to them of course they ask what percentage in the given rate also you can give so it's a very good system it works very well all that laboratories who could get government business have got very high very good turnover but the big challenge is in government business the money part is taking sometimes one year and even after one year without uh, what you call as uh, 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 greasing the palms you can't get the money out so all those challenges are there otherwise i think in the long run what government should do is give to the laboratory on a contract and ensure that in that contract quality is delivered and they are paid i think this will work government can never produce it by itself an efficient uh, solution it will be an r and d again so it should be in the hands of private and dip that rate private laboratories can agree for any rate i think i have learned in the covid days in the covid days uh, we were all asked to bid for governments like uh, jharkhand uh, um, bihar and uh, even uh, um, maharashtra different parts of uh, maharashtra districts but let me tell you the rates quoted by the laboratories was unimaginably low which means what in diagnostics turnover pakadna mushkil hai profit banana mushkil nahi hai this is my inputs thank you sir so ravi summer any questions from your side and uh, shashank if you have if you are not traveling you can also ask yeah ravi i want to know one thing like now lots of private equity kind of investors are entering so does it bother you in terms of their uh, there would be very much profit driven at the end and right now might be they uh, they are charging very low 
and eventually will uh, disrupt the market in terms of we have lots of unorganized players and then they will milk uh, patient uh, is is this thing uh, bothers you it, <laughs> it doesn't bother me now because i have exited until i exited it was bothering in other words there were many who were into business uh, somebody who runs a laboratory will be told by an investor i will give you 2 mil- two, two million dollar if you can grow the business the guy tells sir i can't grow the business until i reduce the rate then reduce the rate sir if i reduce the rate there won't be any profit it has no profit needed you burn now this burning of investor money did not happen till year 2000 subsequently a lot of interest was seen in diagnostic scripts and especially after the three major laboratories got listed and their multiples were very high all over the country every laboratory received 2 million dollar to 20 million dollar depending upon the science and all what they did was burn the big problem in diagnostic specifically laboratory test is without this volume this rate is not possible and without this rate this volume is not possible which means you need somebody to invest heavily so that you become one in top 5 we have been four laboratories top four for the last 20 years srl metropolis lal and thyro care and there would no one could reach there in terms of volume only because as i said it isn't easy unless otherwise you burn the money coming to the specific answer to your question everybody feels they will take off they think that it is only the runway uh, burning but unfortunately after reaching at 20 crore 30 crore turnover they are unable to uh, go to the 100 plus uh, size now this is what happened not one or two there are 100 units across india which are 40 50 60 crores and they are not in a position to go 100 plus crores so this is some kind of peculiar problem because when you have very low volume you have very high profit when you have very high volume you have very high profit in between no profit now tell me how people will travel through a very funny situation which investors need to understand uh, sir one more thing like uh, you, we were talking about top four diagnostic company in india Uh, how much they have market share and how consolidated market is in the western counterparts western counterparts uh, there is no such uh, situation like in india only top 3 4 are uh, uh, having a 15% market share remaining uh, 25000 or 40000 laboratories have the remaining 85% market share this is what is india's position this many players are not there in western countries there a lot of consolidation takes place there the business is not stand alone business as i said it's our institutional business and institutional businesses are all in insurance covered insurance guided insurance channelized so you don't have this kind of a fragment fragmented market in western world where in high per capita income it may not be western even in gulf countries there is no stand alone practice because of which industry is better organized uh, one more question sir on uh, hospital side say as a investor we see hospital as a very low return ratio like uh, roc we looks at uh, for hospital business and they generate very low roce uh, compared to diagnostic which is very high roc but as a investor when we value a hospital business what we do is we take a benchmark of say asian hospitals who trade at 18 20 kind of multiple of ebitda 
TV a bit down. And then we say that India has a very long runway of growth and we have a higher multiple. But do you think it's wrong because we have a very different cost of capital compared to this uh, Southeast Asian uh, hmm. nation? Any business which has high cap, inter, capex intensive, high capex, obviously your return on uh, capital employed will be less. And the hospitals have huge uh, infrastructure cost, number one. Number two, once you are a hospital, you need to put ex, uh, not just uh, small machines, uh, CT, MRI, linear accelerator, PET CT, all those things when you put together, it's a huge investment. And also first three, four, five years go without break even. So hospitals have a very, very big challenge of giving returns and that is why the multiples are not as good as uh, diagnostic. Even in diagnostics, radiology has higher capex, pathology has a lower capex. So pathology business has scalability, radiology is not scalable. By the way, I have failed miserably in a radiology business because in radiology you can't do what you do in pathology. In pathology, the specimen can fly across the country. Here, the patient cannot move more than 25-30 kilometers. So a lot of dynamics are there. I don't think investors understand every dynamic and even the players also are still not clear about what and all is going to help them to improve their bottom line and the returns to the investor. Having said that, Halka, most profitable, highest PE multiple is in pathology business. Yeah, from our... Yes, sir. Uh, doctor, sir. Uh, yes. One uh, question, uh, you have exited thyroid as of now. So uh, what are your plans for future, whether you are thinking uh, to be a shark tank or a, a, or a philanthropist uh, for the future, sir? One year has gone. Still, I have not become pregnant. And uh, I am keen to rest and relax rather than get into race again because if I was to, if I am to run a business, that business was very good to run, I would have run it. Having said that, if I find something truly, truly tempting, I might get in. As of now, there is no specific plan. Also, I want you people to understand, I have only sold Indian business. I have business in uh, eight more countries. Those business I am doing in a different name. That is uh, managed by a team. I am relaxing, but the, not that uh, uh, I have completely exited. Only in India, I have a non-compete and I won't be doing business in India in diagnostics and in healthcare. Thank you, sir. So, guys, uh, if you have any more questions, you can send in your request. Or uh, Ravi, any more questions? Or Shashank, if you got three, you were saying you have something to ask. Dr. Arpit, uh, we have also sent you a request in case you have any questions. So, sir, in the meantime, so, uh, say in the health spend, the diagnostic expenditure is small. How you see going forward, I mean, uh, for the maybe the companies on the insurance side or maybe they get more proactive about uh, preventive health care or so. So, how you see going forward on this front, sir? And this is what I will tell as far as diagnostics is concerned, healthcare is concerned. Today, the mean age of an Indian is 28. He is very busy in marriage, honeymoon, and some of them in maternity home searching, some of them in LKG, UKG admissions, uh, buying car, buying house, but no one truly has crossed truly to 35, 40 years of age only will make healthcare as the need. So if you ask me, Indian mean age 28, to go to your mean age of even 35, it will take next 20 years. And for this next 20 years, you will have a better growth than what you had last 20 years. So one is age, that is a demography. Number two is uh, per capita income is growing. When per capita income goes, uh, healthcare becomes a priority. Third one is awareness is going, especially after the arrival of uh, 
कोविड पीपल नाउ अंडरस्टैंड एंटीबॉडी क्या होता है पीसीआर क्या होता है यह किसी को पता भी नहीं था अभी ऑलमोस्ट एवरीबॉडी यू नोस व्हाट इट इज टू दैट एक्सटेंड इफ यू आस्क मी द अवेयरनेस इज ग्रोइंग सो अवेयरनेस ग्रोथ पर कैपिटा इनकम ग्रोथ एज बिकमिंग हायर विल पुश insurance penetration is 57% make maximum as of today it will go to 50% in another 20 years so that is another push it will come government says healthcare as an vote bank uh, arvind kejriwal and even rajasthan chief minister has announced healthcare is free and even ayushman bharat says healthcare is free so the bottom half of the pyramid will be getting a lot of government money inside so the industry will grow diagnostics will grow so that is what you call as better allocation of funds by government also happens more than anything else a roj roj advertisement aata hai thyroid 100 rupees mein hoega vitamin d 200 rupees mein hoega ये देखकर सभी लोग कंसम्पन ज्यादा करते हैं व्हेन द प्राइस इज रिब्राड डाउन बाय कंपटीशन कंसम्पन गोस अप सो आई सी अ वेरी गुड ग्रोथ इफ द लास्ट 10 20 इयर्स वाज अ सीएजीआर ऑफ 15% नेक्स्ट 20 इयर्स द सीएजीआर विल बी 25% इज व्हाट माय पर्सनल कैलकुलेशन इज इट कुड बी लिटिल लेसर बट आई एम थिंकिंग पॉजिटिव थैंक यू सर तो रवि समर्थ एनी अदर क्वेश्चंस और शल बी वी वी विल वाइंड अप एट 9:15 राइट सर सो गाइस दोस हु हैव क्वेश्चंस वी कैन पुल यू अप काइंडली सेंड अ रिक्वेस्ट वी हैव सम सर फॉर अनदर 10 मिनट्स सो एनी सर एक बिल्कुल बेसिक क्वेश्चन सी अगर कोई ऐसा है जिसको बहुत ज्यादा इंट्रिकेसीज नहीं पता है और ही और शी वांट्स टू लुक at the valuations of diagnostic industry to matlab how he or she go about it matlab kya dekhna chahiye ek bar usme invest karne se pehle ye bahut mushkil ki kaam hai aaj kisi ne tweet kiya tha velu man thyro care share is after 6 years of listing it is the same price on listing today sun ke bahut dukh ho rahi hai not only this company there are many companies but uh, it is happen happens to be a healthcare and, uh, and diagnostic company now ye 6 saal mein kitni uttar uta kitni chada uta itna ka isme bahut paisa bahut banaya log hai bahut khoya log bhi hai but having said that company had been consistently performing there was no uh, challenge in the performance there was some challenge in a quarter but overall in a year there was not at all a challenge that means what the valuation and the multiples are not decided by the promoters same diagnostic companies in exactly a year back was having double the multiples what they are getting today so it's very very challenging for uh, any investor to understand uh, diagnostic industry ka kya multiple de dena hai aur ya wo industry mein kisko kitna multiple dena hai ye itna aasan nahi hai so i wouldn't be able to give any specific inputs but one thing i'll tell you in the long run diagnostics will be not only diagnostics entire healthcare will be a very good script i don't think in healthcare as a total when you look at 5 year 10 year horizon i don't think you will be any less than any of the indices of the market just one question sir uh, follow up uh, where you would be if you would invest where you would be more bullish radiology side pathology side uh, acute illness or chronic illness which you think has a longer faster kind of runway to be very honest with you i will put in every diagnostic company i won't put in one or two because the industry will never go wrong individual companies could go wrong 
I know as an investor, you are tempted to put in that company which is likely to give you 3% more than the industry. You might do that. I am a bit of a conservative investor. If I have to invest, I will pick up a pathology top four, put some money, radiology top four, put some money, hospitals top four, put some money, pharma top four, put some money, and it's a very safe one. You might end up with some 12 to 15% return. Sorry if I am talking a little different, but since you have asked the question, I felt I must talk to you honestly. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Just wanted your view here. Yes, we have another five minutes. If you have a question, then you can ask me. A basic risk factor is the most important in investing at time. So what are the possible risks you see in this space? So what are the risks you see in this space? So what are the risks you see? See, other, other industries like, you know, different in the plastic, paint, paper, or, uh, you know, finance, uh, various industries have multiple risks of sarkars uh, putting some kind of uh, restrictions and usage and, uh, you know, even import-export uh, restrictions all come into picture. When it comes to healthcare, I don't think it will have any challenge. There can be a competition internally, new players may come in, but the more the players, the merrier is the industry. So I don't see in healthcare as a space, there is a risk element. Risk element is you have invested in one company, that company had a, a, in between a very big fortune of some government business. You looked at the CAGR for the last three, four years and you were impressed and you put in money that contract is gone and then suddenly the investors will be disappointed if the growth is not there and multiple will come down and you will be suffering. Yeh to business top four mein kisi ko to jani chahiye, yeh company A is lost the business, it has to go to B. So as an industry, I don't see in healthcare any segment either pharma or, in fact pharma has some high... Uh, higher risk than diagnostics because in pharma some big companies may face some kind of too much of uh, negative uh, publicity as well as uh, a lot of uh, regulations. Diagnostic industry will not have any challenge. Kul ke sabhi sabhi company ho mein, paanch company kam sa kam bada company mein, apna funds ko allocate karke divide kariya ga. रिस्क फिल बिल्कुल जीरो रहेगा मार्केट का रिस्क मार्केट का रिस्क सेंसेक्स नीचे गया सेंसेक्स नीचे गया इंडस्ट्री नीचे गया कोविड गया सब सभी डायग्नोस्टिक स्क्रिप्ट्स डाउन है बट हैविंग सेड दैट दैट काइंड ऑफ रिस्क आर नॉट एनीथिंग इंडिविजुअल्स कैन ट्रूली असेस एंड बी इंटेलिजेंट इनफ मैं इतना ही कहूंगा करंटली डायग्नोस्टिक्स इज हैविंग द लोएस्ट प्राइस एवर वन कैन इमेजिन if you want truly to see a long-term prosperity, Kari the wo sakte aur bhi teen mahina vaisa hi rahega, lekin paanch saal ka plus ka investment mein aapko badiya bhavishya rahega. So Ravi Samarth, any questions or shall we wrap this up? It was very insightful from Dr. Saab about the whole business and his journey towards the uh, uh, entrepreneurial journey from a salaried person to a business owner. So, uh, highly overwhelmed, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Prince. Uh, thank you, the co-hosts and uh, uh, all those who ask questions. And uh, maybe once in a quarter, I will be very happy to be a part of uh, this space. Yeah, sir. Thank you so, so much. Thank and, you, Lord, sir. Thank you. Yes, we'll surely Thank you, organize uh, more such sessions with you and uh, we would be very um, blessed uh, to get insights from you and it, it is very humble of you to generously take all the questions and uh, we have seen people circumvent in cases when they don't want to give direct answers but we see that you are uh, very honest with your answers and uh, 
it is really i mean the disruption which you have caused in the space is uh, really helpful for the masses it was uh, wonderful you. having you over our spaces sir and uh, keep adding value thank sir, you honor to have you today thank you so much sir sing, sing and is, thank you sing, sing is king picture mein akshay kumar bolta hai मैं तो सच बोलता हूँ अपने आप अच्छे लग जाता है थैंक यू थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू टू आवर लिसनर्स हु पेशेंटली लिसन टू अस एंड आस्क वेरी रेलेवेंट क्वेश्चंस एंड इवन इफ एनी वन ऑफ यू कुडंट कनेक्ट ड्यू टू सम कनेक्टिविटी इश्यूज और एनी अदर थिंग वी कैन टेक अप योर क्वेश्चंस इन नेक्स्ट स्पेसेस और मे बी यू कैन tag us and tag sir विद योर क्वेश्चंस वी विल ट्राई टू टेक योर क्वेश्चंस विद सर एंड गेट देम आंसर्ड but make sure it should not be any stock uh, means buy sell if you are looking for any buy sell recommendation that won't help but again genuine questions genuine queries will be taken up and if you guys are enjoying our spaces uh, connect with us so that uh, in future also you get notification when we host such wonderful spaces with the eminent people like dr sir who has a very i mean wonderful journey as a scientist and as well as an entrepreneur and uh, the kind of service he has given to mankind thank you sir thank you bye good night sir thank you oh. sir good night sir